Good morning, everybody. Once again, here we are back to service uh, with uh, Iglise La Page in Wakefield, live from my home on direct. And uh, for everybody uh, online that's following us, I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes till some people get online. And we're going to do some, we're going to sing a little bit and and then we're just going to go into the Word. And while we're getting ready to start, don't forget, I didn't put it on the notes, but don't forget that today is Communion Sunday. It's the first Sunday of the month, and we're celebrating communion together. And uh, there's more and more people getting online, so just uh, scramble around at your place there and get out your Bible and get ready to sing and get ready to worship and get ready to love the Lord. So... As we're beginning this morning, let's pray. Father, we thank you today for everything you're doing and, and your love that you have bestowed upon us and you are keeping us in this time. You are blessing us above all blessings that we could imagine. Lord, we thank you today for your word, Lord, that you have poured into us. And Lord, help us to just have the ability and the anointing, Lord, to pour it out through us. So Lord, as we come together online today, and we just thank you by faith, that we are with you and you are with us and we love you in the name of Jesus amen so as we get started today uh, we're gonna sing. we're gonna sing a song that's pretty oh pretty um, it's an elder it's a one that's back for a while and it says great and mighty is the Lord our God great and mighty is he great and mighty is the Lord our God Great and mighty is he. Lift up your banner. Let the praises ring. Uh, uh, praises to our king. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is he. So it is pretty simple. So let's sing and worship. Open up. Get your Bibles ready. Get your communion uh, things ready. And we are going to have worship service live today in the name of Jesus. So let's sing. Great and mighty is the Lord our God, great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God, great and mighty is He. Oh, lift up your banner, let the anthems ring, praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God, great and mighty. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Oh, lift up your banner, let the anthems ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Let's sing it one more time. Oh, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Oh, lift up your banner, let the anthems ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Announcements for this week. 
We are alive at five in the morning, reading our chapter of the day. Our chapter starting Monday is John chapter 8, right through to John chapter 12 on Friday. We read them together with our foundational uh, verses in Proverbs and Ephesians. And our goal is to find Jesus. On Wednesday evening, 7 to 7.30 is our time of our heart preparation and worship at home. And then we go into doing a small resume of the chapters we have read from last Thursday until Wednesday. And then on Sunday again, we are together at 9.30 at, to 10 at our homes, getting ready and prepared for service, getting our hearts ready to receive. And then we'll be on Facebook Live, on our Facebook Live. For those that are interested in French only, we have a Bible study on Thursday night, which is at 6.30, and we are studying on the subject fear. Is it to be eliminated or overcome? And we are learning that it's both. We need to do both. So as we go into that study and then next Saturday morning at 9.30, we are on Facebook at Joanne Bennett's Facebook. And next week we'll be staying right there as one of our pastors, Pastor Genick, will be bringing uh, the word uh, in French and might even have a chance to have it translated next week. So those are our announcements for this week. So as we um, prepare our hearts once again, let's sing another song if you have the papers that I sent you. And this one is, How Great Is Our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? How great, how great is our God? Uh, name above all names? No, just, just the part we practice. So how great is our God and name above all names? So. God is great, hallelujah. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. One more time, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God, name above, above all names, worthy to be praised, my heart will see. How great 
is our God. And now as we go into our time, as we prepare our hearts for our offering, and you know that uh, we, we have offerings because God has instituted it, not that we become rich, but that we can have enough to supply those in needs for around us. So as you are preparing your heart today for your offering, never forget in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it says, let everyone who gives as he purposes in his heart. And let us give cheerfully, because God loves a cheerful giver. And why do we give? Because we have tasted that the Lord is good. How much he is good? He is, he is valued above everything in our lives. And his word is valued above us. So as we prepare our hearts, you know how to give. We can email it to... Uh, uh, info at igizlapage.com, uh, contact Sister Janet, and just uh, we just give, and uh, we have some great ideas, we just want to inform you uh, in a little bit, things that we have been able to do during this time of crisis to help people, and it's all because uh, people give. And so, Lord, we thank you for our offerings today, we thank you for everything that you put in our heart to give, Lord, and give us a wisdom Lord, to share everything you give to us with somebody else. In Jesus' name, we thank you. So, um, as we prepare our offerings and prepare our hearts, uh, let's not forget those that are in prayer. I really don't have any uh, funny news this week. I didn't get in the pool and couldn't get out, so we're all good there. But in, in this, as we take time in prayer this morning, uh, continue to pray for those that are still in isolation, those that can't get out, those that are working in essential services, our missionaries that are on the field that can't get home. They're still getting, we're getting emails from them and how they're building and how God is allowing them to have food to feed those around him, so around them. So we'll keep those in mind. Don't forget our summer camps that the kids usually go to up until now. There, no, there, is no allowed, there are no camps to be allowed unless you have a group that comes and stays for over 31 days. So that's quite an extended period. So I've been talking to some of those camp leaders, and they're looking forward to getting open, but they don't know when. So pr let's just pray for that, and that, that somebody will see the need for these kids to get together, or these young people to get together and study the Word of God. And in different provinces, there are churches that the government is now allowing uh, groups of 50 or less to get together as long as they're socially uh, separated. So we'll keep praying for that and we will we'll know what to do. And this week, last week, we had the, the prayer request for Shirley Hickey's uh, son's girlfriend and baby. So we have just continually keeping them in prayer that their health will be good and everything will be well. Blood pressure will be great and everything in that birth would be well. And also, this week we got the uh, a couple of prayer requests that uh, uh, one is I saw that I never even I looked at it this way but I never really saw it like this but we need to pray for our officers of the law that are under a lot of attack right now because of things but when our officers start stopped protecting us we're in trouble so pray for them give them strength give them wisdom and, and everything they're doing because they are on the front lines uh, looking after stuff. And also got a, a prayer request from Amy for her grandmother that she fell and she broke an ankle and she's in a, a residence, I believe, and now they have found something else and they're going to have another operation. So we will just pray for all of those needs this week. We only don't, we don't stop praying after we finish on Sunday morning. We start, we stop praying when, when we need to stop praying and, and tell when God says, okay, I've heard, you know, I've answered your prayer, then we stop. So let's just take a bit of time and pray for all of those in isolation, Jesus, that are out there today and, and, they're, and, and they, just, they just kind of feel trapped. Help them and let their mind be strong. And those that are working in essential services that they're out there facing as this virus is still there and there's still people are piling fear on top of fear, you would give them a great mental strength. And our missionaries that are there on the mission field that they cannot come home and conditions there are deplorable compared to our conditions. And they're just facing 
uh, different things, but they're facing it with the peace and the joy of the Lord in their hearts. And for those that are in summer camps that don't know what they're going to do for the children this year or the young people, be with them, strengthen them. And those that in our time for us to give us wisdom when it comes time to when should we open the church? How are we going to do this? How are we going to be a good witness? So Lord, help us in that way to do those things. And Lord, we just thank you for every officer of the law, those that are in the army, those that are in the police, those that are keeping things together. Lord, give them strength today. Don't let them get discouraged. Don't let them just resign and decide it's time to quit. But Lord, protect them also and give them strength as they protect us. And we think once again of, of Sister Shirley's uh, son's girlfriend, Lord, that you would just be with her and give her strength and, and, and the baby, that the baby would be well and none of these things that are around them would affect them. We also pray, Lord, for Amy's grandmother today, Lord, that you would just give her strength. And, and the testimony is that she's ready, she's ready to go home. So, Father, we just thank you today that you are with her, you give her peace take away her pain, and just love her, Lord, where she is today. So we thank you and love you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. So before we go into the message, let's, let's sing a, uh, Amazing Love, because that's what our really our message is going to be today as we go in and, and lead us into a time of communion. Amazing Love. How can it be that you, King, would die for me? We're going to sing just one verse, I'm forgiven, amazing love, and maybe the chorus a couple of times, and as we get our heart prepared to. You know, sometimes we talk about God's love, but we don't receive God's love. We have all kinds of qualifications or things that we need to do. We're going to learn different than that today in our lesson today. So let's sing, I'm forgiven, because you were forsaken, sing it to Jesus. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit lives within me. Why? Because you died and rose again. So let's sing. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. Spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Let's sing that verse again. I'm forgiven. Forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit lives within me. Because you died and arose again. How can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. In all I do, I honor amazing love. How can it be that you, my King, would die for me? I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. In all I do, I honor you. Amazing love, amazing love, I believe that you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you. In all I do, I honor you. Thank you, Jesus. 
Some people just, if you just send me your, email me your testimonies, email me your prayer requests. Uh, that way I can make them public and people can rejoice with us and pray with us. And and uh, even though there are some prayer requests that I know of, uh, I cannot, I do not make them public until I, I, I'm allowed to make them public because that's just the way we don't want to in, intrude in an, anybody's privacy. So if you have prayer requests, Send the emails to me, send them to Sister Janet, and she'll get them to me, and we will just uh, get them out. And if you have some funny stories, you know, like maybe falling off a horse or something, that's an inside joke or something like that. So we can just uh, uh, rejoice together in at, while we're at home as if we were at church, and, you know, go to church and we share our stuff, so like for you to do that and also I would really 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 once again to thank Sister Janet for all the work that she does for me and the emails whatever I need to get sent out I send it to her and and she sends it out she sends notes out and she sends things out to help people follow along with their studies I really appreciate that a lot she's uh, kind of working behind the scenes but she's there getting everything out and uh uh, just doing a great work and if you have a prayer request just send it in the minute we get it we don't wait till Sunday or the next service to start praying we start praying about it right away and when you get an answer to your prayer uh, also oh and I just this one almost slipped my mind sister Gloria last week we had a uh, she sent in a prayer request that she was going to visit somebody and bring the gospel to them and praise God that person accept Jesus in their life and salvation came to their home that day so we need to rejoice over that too because that was an answer to prayer so as we go into our lesson if you don't have the notes go to first timothy chapter 6 verse 11 and 12 and ephesians we're going to read our foundational verses why because the word creates all things we don't i don't understand what that means i just know it works i'll tell you something else i don't understand when I get in my car, I start my car, and I put it in reverse, it backs up. I don't understand. Put it in drive, and it goes ahead. I don't understand. But it works, so I do it. It's the same way in the spiritual world. If it works, we do it. The Word works. The Word creates things like it says in John. So as we begin to read, allow the Word to begin by faith to create in you whatever you need to be created. So 1 Timothy 6, 11 says... But you, O man of God, flee these things, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. And verse 12, it says, fight the good fight of faith. We must understand that when, as a Christian, we are going to have to fight to stay in faith. We don't need to fight anything. We just need to fight to stay in faith. And faith and the word will work for us. And Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10 
As you turn in your Bibles, uh, Paul is writing and he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong where? In the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness at this age, against the hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having done or girded your waist with truth, put on the breastplate of righteousness. As we see these, um, go through these things, these are not things that we put on every day because you don't take off your salvation and you don't take off your righteousness and you don't take off your truth. So what Paul is teaching us, by way of faith, make sure that we are always, these, these are, that our faith is hooked to what God has given us to allow this armor to protect us and look after us. And verse 15, having shot your feet with the feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked ones, the wicked one, take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And today, what we're going to talk about, we started last week, and I'm absolutely certain I'm not going to finish it today. Uh, we'll just keep going until it's finished. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the or the and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. But today we are going to concentrate on the helmet of salvation. Number one, our salvation never changes. It never gets weaker or stronger. It is what it is and always will be. So it's not taking on our salvation. It's taking on the helmet of salvation. What is the helmet of salvation? It's our way of thinking about salvation. And the way that we think about our salvation will control what we're doing, will control our peace and our joy and our contentment and our love Everything is, is control of everything, of course, is in salvation, but everything that we do will be controlled is what is our aspect of salvation. And we look at in our salvation, in our spiritual life, our, our way of looking at salvation or our salvation in the spiritual world controls whether we are winning or losing. That's the base of the way we think of it. So then, of course, last week we talked about 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1 and 13. I wanted to come back here. It says, therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. The loins of your mind is your thinking. And we studied that last year that or last week that the loins of your mind or the loins of your body is the proactive stimulus to reproduction. So. If we have our, the loins of our mind bound in the Word, it will determine who we are and what we do. Because that will reproduce word uh, reproduction or it will reproduce world reproduction. Because Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So thinking in your heart, Thinking through your mind from your heart will determine who you are and how, what is your level of joy and peace. So, the question I ask us today, how is our mind being stimulated? Is our mind being stimulated by the media? There's nothing wrong with the media, folks. We need to stay on, on top of what's going on. There's nothing, there's no sin in that. But is our mind being stimulated with the media or the Word of God? I'll tell you how to know if it is. Which one are you spending more time on? If I'm spending more time in the Word, then my mind is being stimulated from the Word. If I'm spending more time listening to theories and everything that's going on, and I, I, folks, that's not a sin. I'm not saying that's a sin. What I'm saying is whether the one that we feed on will stimulate our reproduction. 
So if I, and it's, it's in the spiritual world, if I am feeding on fear, I wouldn't have joy, I wouldn't have peace, because fear will control us whether we are in Christ or not. So, as we step into this, we, we are going to decide, what do we know, or what do we think about salvation? Um, we, we, we are a people that live by faith. But you know what? You can't have faith in God if you don't know Jesus. It's as simple as that. You can't have your faith will not grow and grace will not grow in us if we don't know about Jesus. So when we look at salvation, we, had, we learned that also that we have access by one spirit to the Father. And we looked at that last week. It was like being ushered into his presence. The word uh, prosagoga, that's the Greek word. You don't know if I said it right or not. But anyway, we, he, he, he his, the Holy Spirit brings us into the presence of Almighty God, the same as a, a, a someone that's a worker for a royalty. They usher somebody into the presence of the King. The Holy Spirit ushers us into the presence of the Father, and we have access that way by faith. Now, just to give us strength in this, remember I said the word creates. We'll go to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1 says this, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering into us his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Then we go down to verse 11 that says, Let us therefore be diligent. When I first read this, because I, was, uh, I took more time thinking of other things instead of the word, and I was, my, my, I was saved, but my way of thinking uh, thinking about salvation was uh, not quite right, let's put it this way. When I looked at this and it said, therefore be diligent, I kind of had a little bit of fear. And I'll explain as I go on here. Because I was afraid maybe I couldn't get into rest. But it says, be diligent to enter that rest, that anyone shall fall according to the same example of disobedience that we know is uh, back when the children, God had promised the promised land to them. And it, that kind of, because mm, mm, I wasn't thinking right about my salvation, these next two verses really sent me in a spin. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of our thoughts and intents of our heart. And therefore is no creature hidden from, uh, from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. And when I was looking at thinking about salvation more in the sight of works than I was in thinking what salvation really was, I knew that if I was open all the time before God, I was in trouble. So it kind of brought a little bit of fear. Until we come to verse 14. Seeing then, this is our helmet. The way that we see salvation, which is that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. I thought the word was there too cut out my weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So when I begin to see, I begin to focus, I know, I know the Word creates things, then I begin to adjust my thinking to my, how my salvation works, and my salvation works through this high priest. And then verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly, to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Listen, come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and grace. Listen, if you're right, you don't need mercy. If you're okay, you don't need grace. 
So what this is saying, that we come into his presence boldly when we're not right. When our actions are not completely right and our thinking is messed up and, and we might have spit something out of our mouth that shouldn't have come out of our mouth and, and, and our attitude might be all messed up. That's when we can come boldly into his presence to obtain mercy and find grace because we are in need. Why? Because of our salvation. That's why we need to adjust our way of thinking about our salvation and this is what I want us I want to start to, to for us to start doing today stop looking at who and what wrongs we did and start looking to our salvation who is Jesus Christ who is perfect and he sympathizes with our weaknesses doesn't leave us there but we can have mercy and grace and coming boldly into his presence and as I, I, more I study this and the more I'm looking into this, I, I'm so seeing that, that salvation, our way of looking at our salvation, determines every aspect of our spiritual life. And, and I was looking at this, I came upon uh, the testimony of, of Charles Spurgeon. And I just want to read his testimony, it's going to take two or three minutes, but listen closely, it's very interesting. We know that Charles Spurgeon was a great man of God, a great preacher that, that did great things for God. And uh, he just, he wrote this in his testimony in his words, and I'm going to read it exactly in his words. He said, and this is what he says. He starts by saying, I sometimes think I might have been in darkness and despair until now, had it not been for the goodness of God in sending a snowstorm one Sunday morning while I was going to a certain place of worship. When I could go no farther because of the storm, I turned down a side street and came to a little primitive Methodist chapel. In that chapel, there may have been a dozen or 15 people. I had heard of the, method, the primitive Methodists, how they sang so loudly that they made people's heads ache, but that did not matter to me. I wanted to know how I might be saved. And if they could tell me that, I did not care how much they made my head ache. The minister did not come that morning. He was snowed in, I suppose. At last, a very thin-looking man, a shoemaker or tailor or something of that sort, went up to the pulpit to preach. Now, now it is well that preachers should be instructed, but this man was really stupid. He was obliged to stick to his text for the simple reason they had little else to say. His text was in Isaiah 45 and 22, Look unto me, and you be saved, all the ends of the earth. He did not even pronounce the words correctly, but that did not matter. There was, I thought, a glimpse of hope for me in that text. The preacher began thus. My dear friends, this is a very simple text indeed. It says, look. Now looking don't take a deal of pains. It ain't lifting up, lifting up your foot or your finger. It is just look. Well, a man needn't go to college to learn to look. He may be the biggest fool, and yet you can look. A man doesn't need to be worth a lot of money, uh, work a thousand a year to be able to look. Anyone can look. Even a child can look. But then the text says, "Look unto me." Ah, he said in broad Essex, many on many on ye, many on ye are looking to yourselves. But it's no use looking there. You'll never find any comfort in yourselves. Some look to God the Father, or they look by the by and by. Jesus Christ says, look unto me. Some of, some of ye say, we must wait for the Spirit's working. You have no business with that just now. Look to Christ. The text says, look unto me. Then the good man followed up, up his text in this way. Look unto me. I am sweating great drops of blood. Look unto me. I am, I am hanging on the cross. Look unto me. I am dead and buried. Look unto me. I rise again. Look unto me. I ascend to heaven. Look unto me. I am sitting at the Father's right hand. Oh, poor sinner. Look unto me. Look unto me. When he had gone to about that length and managed to spin about ten minutes or so, he was at the end of his tether. Then he looked at me under the gallery and dare say, with so few present, he knew that I was a stranger. Just fixing his eyes on me as if he knew all my heart, he said, Young man, you look very miserable. Well, I did, 
but I had not been as accustomed to having remarks made from the pulpit on my personal appearance before. However, it was a good blow struck right home. He continued, and you always will be miserable, miserable in life, miserable in death, if you don't obey my text. And if you, but if you obey now, this moment, you will be saved. Then lifting up his hands, he shouted, as only a primitive Methodist could do, young man, look to Jesus Christ. Look, look, look. You have nothing to do but to look and live. I saw at once the way of salvation. I know, I know not what else he said. I did not much notice of it. I was so possessed with this one thought. Like as, as when the brazen serpent was lifted up, the people only looked and were healed. So it was with me. I have been waiting to do 50 things. But when I heard the word, look, what a charming word it seemed to me. Oh, I looked until I could almost have looked my eyes away. Then and there the cloud was gone. The darkness had rolled away. And the moment I saw the sun, I could have been risen at that instant and sung with the most enthusiastic of them of the precious blood of Jesus, the simple faith which looks alone, which looks alone to him. Oh, that someone had told me this before. Trust Christ and you will be saved. So as we look at this testimony and the simplicity of salvation, we're going to finish in the book of Numbers, chapter 21 and verse 5. We all know this story. I've read this story a hundred times. You've read this story so many times. But as it just brings out this aspect to change our way of looking at or the helmet of salvation that we have on. It protects us, but it protects us when we're looking at salvation the right way, not the wrong way. In Numbers chapter 1, uh, Numbers chapter 21, verse 5. And as people spoke against God, we remember, this is the children of Israel, God had done great things for them, and now they're up against it again, and they said, the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among them, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, where we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for his people. Then the people said to Moses, Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent. Set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall be saved. So today, as we get ready to take our communion and 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 share uh, the body of Christ and and share in His His death and burial, uh, <laughs> how do you look? How do I look at salvation? Am I look at salvation as of something I've got to do? Am I looking at salvation as something that a way I've got to act? Or just do I look at salvation to the fact that Jesus said, when you're in trouble and when you're not in trouble, look to Jesus. Are we looking to Jesus? Like the phrase that you hear me say often, we are reading the gospel of Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we're looking to see Jesus. Why? Salvation is not just simply being saved the day that we believed in our heart and confessed with our mouth. It's a, took, it's a, a complete uh, encompassing way that we live, salvation, and we look to Him. So as we take this bread today, we know that uh, Isaiah chapter 53 says He was beaten for our, by His stripes, we are healed. In other words, he was beaten for our healing. So, Father, we thank you today, Lord, for your body that you sacrificed for us and, and you gave to us. Lord, we thank you today, Lord, that, Lord, help us, help us, Lord, to change the way that we see salvation. Help us see how simple it is. Help us to see that we only need to look to you. So, Lord, as we take... Uh, part in the breaking of this bread that was your body beaten for us. Lord, we thank you today that you're helping us day by day to change the way that we live and the way we think. So Lord, as we think about salvation today, 
And Lord, we thank about healing through your body. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice you did. Lord, and we share today in this bread together. And so we all eat together in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe some people will watch this video and they'll wonder why why we, we take communion, why we share this time. Because this is our salvation. This is what keeps me. This is what's given me eternal life. This is what's helping me know Jesus. This is what's teaching me how to live. This is what's bringing me joy. This is what's bringing me salvation in good times and bad times. My salvation is secure. If I'm good or bad, my salvation is secure. Why? Because I can come boldly into his presence. And as we take the cup today, that was his blood, Jesus said, and Paul said, that was shed for the remission of our sins, that our sins would be gone. That's salvation, folks. That's sins gone, not covered. So Lord, we thank you today as we hold this cup up to you, as each one of us in our homes, Lord, we're just reaching out to you and loving you for our salvation. Lord, and we are just depending now on your word to change our way of looking at our salvation. Lord, that we would stop looking at other people's salvation and begin to look at our salvation, how confident we are in you, how much strength we have in you because of what you did for us. So Lord, you, were, you shed your blood on the cross and you said your last words when you said it is finished. In other words, it's done, folks. Everything is done. Everything is accomplished. Lord, so we just depend on you. Lord, as we share this cup today, Lord, let us remember, Lord, it's all about you and salvation is you. So let's drink it together. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. Thank you, Jesus. We, our sins are gone. We are pure, a people without sin. And Lord, we just thank you today, even though we're not here together, we are together by faith. And Lord, let us this week, Lord, let us put into practice as we begin to begin to see Lord, that salvation is not difficult. The difficult thing was done when you died on the cross and you suffered on the cross. So, Lord, we thank you today and we love you. So, church, before we leave today, um, I am praying that for each one of us, from myself to yourself, that there will be a strength come in us as we study the armor of God. There will be a strength overcome us like we just something we don't understand and we would just allow the word to strengthen us and, and to the, allow the word to change our way of thinking and God will do that he's he'll do it it, it takes a process sometimes but he'll do it what we have to believe is in him so let's I want to finish with these last three verses Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, 9, and 10. And we need to start thinking of our, our salvation in this way. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Sometimes we just slip over that. But grace is the power not to sin. So we are saved by grace through faith or our way of thinking. And that, not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are His workmanship, created or His masterpiece, Created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Do you see how simple that is? And when we just finish up with this, I, I thought this was really good. I heard this. You ladies know that when someone invites us, you out for dinner with the family, and I think I said this last week, it's worth repeating. And almost everybody, the first question out of their mouth is, 
what do you want me to bring? Right? But in reality, when someone invites us to their home, they're not expecting us to bring anything except ourselves. And we have the same tendency when we lean into salvation. We talk about salvation. We talk about the great work that Jesus did. And it comes almost to the place where we're all saying, well, I owe him so much. No, it's a gift. And then when we come to the Lord for salvation, we don't realize it, but then we almost add to it. Well, what do you want me to bring? Nothing. Just ourselves. And we get into these ideas, spiritual good ideas. Do you want me to pray more? No, we will pray more. But that's not the goal. That has nothing to do with our salvation, except it's a result of. Not a cause to. We come to Him. And we look on Him. Look on the... the like one person said... The serpent on the pole was a, 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 a type of Jesus on the cross. Because although Jesus lived his whole life without sin, on the cross, the Bible says he became our sin for us. So we look on what he did and we will be saved. Let's change our way of thinking. And put on the helmet of salvation. And let it protect us. Let salvation protect us. Like salvation was designed to do. So I want to thank everybody today that was online. And listening to us. And uh, have a great week. Don't forget to send in your prayer quiz. Don't forget to send in your testimonies. And soon and very soon. We'll be back together. One way or the other. At the church in Jesus' name. Let's believe it. And everybody said, Amen. Have a great week.